So, how many PCI lanes do I have? This is an important question asked by almost anyone interested in building PCs and understanding how PCI Express interface works. Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all answer or approach to this question because the amount of PCI lanes you have varies depending upon what CPU you have and what motherboard chipset you have. It is also important to note that not all the PCI lanes offered by the CPU and the motherboard are user accessible. Uh, in other words, not all the provided PCI lanes translate into PCI slots that you see here for you to put an expansion card into. To further explain how to figure out how many PCI lanes you have in total and how many are user accessible in the form of PCI slots, let us study CPU and motherboard chipset separately. Let's look at the CPU PCI lanes first. Depending upon whether you have an Intel or an AMD CPU, the amount of PCI lanes you have will differ. Intel Core series processors, for instance, feature 16 PCI lanes for 10th gen or older processors and 20 PCI lanes for 11th gen processors at the moment. How do you figure this number out or the amount of PCI lanes the processor has? Well, for Intel processors, the easiest way is to head over to the spec sheet. A simple search of the model name in Google should reveal the spec sheet for your CPU and the spec sheet clearly mentions the amount of PCI lanes the processor has. For instance, the 10th generation Core i7 10700K CPU, as can be seen here, has 16 PCIe lanes. The newer 11th gen Intel Core i7 11700K processor has 20 PCIe lanes. In contrast to this, AMD Ryzen desktop based processors from 1000 to the latest 5000 series offer 24 PCIe lanes. Unfortunately, AMD Ryzen spec sheets online do not mention the amount of PCI lanes they offer, but you can do some simple digging on Google to figure the number out easily. Now the most important point here to note is how these lanes are configured and whether these lanes are user accessible or not. On Intel 10th gen and older core series processors for instance, all of the 16 lanes are user accessible through PCI slot. So here, for instance, I have an older Intel Core processor with 16 PCI lanes. It has all of its lanes connected to this top PCI X16 card. Therefore, all of its lanes are accessible. The top X16 slot here is primarily used for installing the graphics card. On 11th gen Intel Core processors, however, which offer 20 PCI lanes, the lanes are accessible, but not all in the form of PCI slots. So the 11th gen core processor series has 16 lanes that connect to the X16 slot, just as with the older 10th generation CPUs, but the extra four lanes connect to an M.2 slot, which can be used for adding in an NVMe SSD. So while the extra four lanes on the 11th gen processors are user accessible, they are limited in terms of what you can install on them, which in this case is an SSD. Ryzen series processors work a bit differently. As mentioned earlier, they have 24 lanes. 16 of these connect to an X16 slot, just as with Intel processors, and other four connect to an M.2 slot for an NVMe SSD, just as was the case with the 11th gen Intel Core processors. The rest of the four lanes, however, connect to the chipset. This graphics explains how AMD Ryzen PCI lanes are distributed. Here we only consider the left side of the graphics for now. So here you can see that the second block here uh, reads 20 PCI lanes. 16 lanes in this block are user accessible in the form of an X16 slot for graphics card. It also shows another four lanes, but these connect to the chipset. So they are not user accessible and are used internally by the system.
the rest of the four lanes go to the third block so here you can have four lanes connected to an m.2 slot for nvme ssd installation if you choose the first option which most ryzen processors do so in total you have 24 pci lanes here coming from the cpu so to summarize depending upon what generation make and model of your cpu is you can have anywhere between 16 to 24 pci lanes from your cpu for a consumer grade desktop however 16 to 20 lanes are generally user accessible only now let us look at the pci lanes available to you from the motherboard chipset here things get a bit complicated depending upon the motherboard chipset you have and how your motherboard is configured the amount of pci lanes you get from the motherboard will differ let us consider the popular amd motherboard chipsets there are three popular amd chipsets available at the moment for consumer grade desktops amd a520 is an entry-level chipset for ryzen processors this offers a six user accessible PCI lanes. You can see here on the right hand side the first block reads 4 PCI 3.0 lanes and the second says pick 1. So here you can potentially get 6 PCI lanes depending upon how the motherboard is configured and the option it chooses. Similarly here we have the AMD B550 we saw earlier. This is a mid-range chipset for Ryzen processors. It offers 10 user accessible PCI lanes. Again, you can look at the blocks here on how a motherboard with this chipset can potentially be configured. Finally, here we have the AMD X570. This is a high-end chipset found on premium AMD motherboard. This offers 16 user accessible PCI lanes. Again, how these lanes are distributed and how the slots are configured differs from motherboard to motherboard. Let's look at a practical example now. Here we have the Gigabyte P67 UD3 motherboard. It features the Intel P67 chipset which has 8 PCI lanes. However, in terms of how many are user accessible, you have to refer to the motherboard spec sheet. This is because some of the chipset PCI lanes are also reserved for onboard components like USB and SATA ports. From the spec sheet of the motherboard, we can learn that the first PCIe X16 slot here connects directly to the CPU and has 16 PCI lanes. This would be ideal for installing a graphics card. The second PCIe X16 slot here is only connected to four PCI lanes coming from the motherboard chipset. So this is very important to note. Despite this slot having a full size, it is in fact only an X4 slot. Now what about the smaller X1 slots? Now, these slots also connect to the P67 chipset PCI lanes. However, they share the PCI lanes with the larger X4 slot here. The spec sheet tells us that if the first and the second X1 slots are occupied, then this large X4 slot will clock down and operate in only X1 mode. So whether you insert only a single X4 card here, or four smaller X1 cards here, the amount of PCI lanes accessible to you are four from the chipset. Adding four to the 16 PCI lanes coming from the CPU, and you get a total of 20 PCI lanes for this setup. So there you have it. The key takeaway from this video is that you must consult the spec sheet of the CPU and the motherboard chipset in order to figure out how many PCI lanes you have. This video should have equipped you with what to particularly look for in the spec sheets. And there's also one more very important consideration regarding PCI lanes to take into account and that is its generation. Every newer generation of PCI standard doubles the bandwidth of lanes compared to the previous generation.
This is very significant to know because with newer PCI generation, you can potentially install newer cards like faster SSD drives. This particular motherboard here is old and only conforms to the second generation PCI standard. But motherboards today can be found featuring newer generations. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. And if you found something of value from this video, then please like the video and also subscribe to this channel.